Each of the 180 students at a college play exactly one of the piano, the guitar, and the drums. The number of male and female students who play the piano, the guitar, and drums are given in the following table. A student at the college is chosen, a student, only one. Find the probability that the student plays the guitar. So, this is the section which shows us how many, uh, 82 of the students play guitar. 44 plus 32, 38 is 82 out of 180. And we are choosing only one student. So the probability that the person plays guitar is 82 out of 180. And if we simplify this, this will be 41 out of 90. B part. Find the probability that the student is a male given that the student plays the drums. Okay. So uh, we know that probability of a uh, male given that the person plays drums is equal to the intersection of the two divided by the probability of the people playing drums. Okay, so this is what we will do. Now this is we have to find and we have to identify these two. So let's see where is P M intersection D. The males who play drums and they are 11. So they are 11 out of 180. Now probability of the people who play drum and the person is here 31. Yeah? The total number of people who play drum are 31 and we can write probability of playing drum is 31 out of 180. So now our probability of male given that he plays drum is 11 out of 180 divided by 31 out of 180. 180 and 180 cancel out and answer is 11 out of 31. Okay, C part. Determine whether the events the student plays the guitar and student is a female are independent. Okay, for independent events, probability of on what are the two? Let's say this is G playing guitar and it's a female intersection female must be equal to probability of person playing guitar multiplied by probability that the person is a female. Okay? And let's find these three and see if they are equal. If they are equal, the events are independent. So let's see how many females play guitar and that's what this probability will be. Okay. Females playing guitar is 38. Yeah? So 38 out of 180. equal to probability that people play guitar and we already found this earlier 41 out of 90 multiplied by probability that is a female so what is the probability of being female 42 plus 38 which will be 80 plus 200 total 100 females are there out of 180 so 100 out of 180 and I don't see any relationship because 180 and 180 cancel and zeros cancel here and it becomes 38 equal to 410 over 9 and 410 over 9 is not 38 that means the events are not independent. If you are not comfortable with complete numbers, you can convert this into decimal, which will be a probability. This will also be a probability and this will also be a probability. Just multiply them. 400% sure this will not be equal. We can see that clearly. Okay. Move on to the next one. 
a group of six people is to be chosen from four men okay let's try four men eleven women okay in how many different ways different ways can a group of six be chosen if it must contain exactly one man that means out of four men we have to choose exactly one and rest of the how many total we are choosing six rest of the five will be chosen from women only we can put this in a calculator and we will get an answer let me do it myself and by the time I do this I will request you to please subscribe to this channel it's a big motivation when you see subscribers increasing and liking your videos so please do so thank you and I got it as 1848 different ways it can happen next two of the 11 women are sisters Jane and Kate in how many different ways can a group of six be chosen if Jane and Kate cannot be together in group so either they don't like each other or People don't want two sisters to be in a group so that people will think that they are biased. So, we do not want them to be together. So, it is also possible that both of them are not in the group, right? It's also possible. So, there will be three probabilities. Only Jane is there or only Kate is there or none of the two. Right? These are the three possibilities. So let's look at this possibility first. Jane is in the group. So Jane is fixed. She is there. That means we have to choose remaining five. So remaining five are to be chosen from uh, these 11 women and four men. Isn't it? So Jane is gone. So 10 women are left. But out of these 10, Kate is also gone. Why? Because if Jane is in the group, Kate will not be in the group. So she can't be the part of the selection. So out of 15 people, only 13 are left for us to be chosen. And 5 people will be chosen from those 13 because Jane is the 6th person who is already in the group. Now, second case, when we want Kate to be in the group, exactly the same situation will happen. That means we can multiply this by... Two. Now third, in third selection, neither Jane nor Kate are part of the selection. So, or either these two will happen or out of 13 people, all six people will be selected. And Jane and Kate are not part of these 13 because total 15 were there, those two are removed. And this is 4290 ways. Okay, let's move on to the question number three. A bag contains five yellow and four green marbles. Okay. Three marbles are selected at random from the bag without replacement. Okay, that means you take the marble out but you don't put it back. Okay, show that the probability that exactly one of the marble is yellow is 5 over 14. So exactly one. The possibility that the first Marble itself is yellow and other two are green. This is exactly one, isn't it? Or first one is green, second yellow, third is again green. Or first two are green and third one is yellow and this is the only possibility, these three. So let's see how can we interpret this with probability. Probability that it is Y, G, G. So first Y. There are five yellows out of total nine. That is the probability of getting a yellow. Then we have four greens but since we are not replacing the ball, marbles left now are eight because one is out which was yellow third one is three out of seven seven marbles are left but greens are also gone one green is gone so three greens are left and this is the probability of YGG if we see probability of GYG it will be same number but in different uh, arrangement look green 4 out of 9 right the 9 marbles and 4 of them are green and then we want a yellow it will be 5 out of 8 
and then we want a green one green is already out because of this so three out of seven so same calculation in different arrangement and same will happen here four out of nine times three out of eight times five out of seven because this is yellow no yellow has been taken before this so I can write this all of them as three multiplied by one of them any one I can let me take this one 4 out of 9 times 3 out of 8 times 5 out of 7. In place of adding these 3, I just multiplied them by number 3. So this 3 and this 3 cancel out. 4 cancels out. So we are left with 5 over 14 and this is what we wanted to show. Next. The random variable x is the number of yellow marbles selected. Okay draw up the probability distribution table for x so let me let me draw it here okay so x and probability of x so it's possible that no yellow was drawn it's possible that exactly one yellow was drawn exactly two yellows were there and all three were yellow these are the four possibilities and we already know that for one we got an answer of 5 out of 14. So let's focus on zero. So uh, zero means it will be green, green, green throughout. So probability of green, green, green will be four out of nine for the first green, three out of eight for the second, and next will be two out of seven. So four times three is 12 times two, 24. Let's not simplify this, okay, 24 over uh, 504 now similarly we'll do for exactly two uh, yellows so exactly two yellows so it can be yellow yellow green or yellow green yellow green yellow yellow can you see exactly same like we did for yellow so we'll do the same thing I'll just multiply three and, and take any one of them. Let's take this one. 5 out of 9, 4 out of 8, but green is the first one, so again 4 out of 7. So 3, okay, let's not simplify again because I want to add them. So it will be 15 times 4 is 60 times 4 is 240. Now for 3 yellows, there are only yellow, yellow, yellow. So probability of three yellows will be five out of nine, four out of eight, and three out of uh, seven, yeah. So five, zero, four again, and this will be five times four, 20 times three, 60. So since all of them have five, zero, four, except for this, let's also change this to divide by five, zero, four, so that I can verify if my answer is correct so 14 times 36 is 504 so that means 36 has to be multiplied with 5 which is 180 and now we can see if the sum is 1 means 504 or out of 504 so let's see 24 plus 180 plus 240 this one is optional, okay, just to make sure that our answer is correct. So 240 plus 60 will be 300, 300 plus 180, 480 plus 24, 504. So yeah, the sum of all these four probabilities is one, so our answer is correct. If you had a simplified form, there's nothing harm in that, but it looks good when you add them straightforwardly and write your answer. So you can write a simplified form of these three. So this is the table they wanted and you can show this as probability distribution table. Find expected value of x. So expected value is sigma x multiplied by p, the probability of x. Okay. So we'll multiply each x by its own probability and add sigma means that and we'll get expected value. So let's do that. We have 0 multiplied by 24 over 504. 
Then we have 1 multiplied by uh, 180 over 504. Then 2 is multiplied by its own power rate, 240 over 504. And finally, 3 multiplies with 60 over 504. And use your calculator to find this value. Let me do this is 0. This is 180 plus 480 plus 180 again divided by 504. Okay, 180 plus 180 is 360, and 360 plus uh, 48 will be 840 divided by 504. And we can't leave our answer like this. Divide 840 by 504, and when I divide that, I will get um, okay 1.666. I'm getting that is 1.673 significant figure. This is the expected value. Next question number four. In how many different ways can nine letters? They have already counted them of the word telescope be arranged. So. Nine letters can be arranged in nine factorial ways, but there may be some repetition. E, you can see, E is three times, so we have to divide it by three factorial. All right, and then anything else? T, L, S, C, E, O. None of them is repeating now. And let's put this in our calculator. And it comes out to be 60,480 different ways. Okay. Next. In how many different ways can nine letters of word telescope same can be arranged so that there are exactly two letters between T and C. Okay. This can be tricky. So T and two spaces and C. So there are four spaces taken by them. So how many left? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is the possibility. So this is one arrangement, right? Is it possible to, they said two letters between T and C. They did not say the T first and C later. That means we can multiply this by two, this arrangement. So C and T is also possible. Now we are left with seven blank spaces, right? So we can write seven factorial ways. These seven blank spaces can be arranged but again three e's are still there so three factorial will multiply divide it with now this t and c are not possible to be only on these two positions next could be like this e here and c here still there are two places between them and again the seven places are vacant that means the same situation will happen uh, how many times? One is here, two, three, four, five, six, and six only. Because if T is here, two blank spaces, and C is here, that's possibility. The seventh one, T blank blank, there is no space for C. So this is not possible. So there are six places where these T and C can take their places and exchange the places. We have already taken care of the uh, combination so we'll just multiply it by six and that's it we have taken care of everything just put this in a calculator and we get uh, 10,080 such arrangements let's move on to the next one in a certain region the probability that any on any given day October in October rather is wet is 0 0.16 okay 16% chances that any day of the October will be wet. It will rain then. Independently of other days. So, independence is there. Find the probability that in a 10-day period in October, fewer than 3 days will be wet. Okay. So, I think because there are number of selections are selected, there are 4 conditions for binomial distribution to be applied. First one, the probabilities should be independent and they are already saying this independent. Secondly, there should be a success and there should be a failure. Success is 0 0.16 to get a wet day and failure will be rest of 1 minus 0 0.16, 0 0.84. That's good. Third, 
selected number of selections means limited number of selections there are 10 they are limited third condition is also met and the fourth one is that the probability remains same throughout for every day probability is 0 0.16 so all four conditions are met we can use binomial distribution so they're saying fewer than three days will be wet that means our success is three or rather two or less not even three is part of it fewer than three means two or less so it is the probability of x can we call it x yes we can call it x equal to zero or x is one or x is two these are the probabilities we have to find out so let's start with zero out of 10 days no day should be wet that means we will not have any success so we will give the probability of success an exponent of zero and failure is one minus 0 0.16 is q the failure which is 0 0.84 so 0 0.84 gets all the 10 exponents the sum should be equal to total n plus okay 10 c 1 0 0.16 to the power 1 this number and this number must match okay and 0 0.84 to the power 9 plus 10 c 2 0 0.16 to the power 2 0 0.84 to the power 8 just plug this whole thing carefully in a calculator and you will get the answer the answer i got is almost 0 0.7 9 4 okay number b find the probability that the first wet day is in october on 8th of october rather. that means seven days it does not rain so uh, there will be failure for seven days and eighth day will be a success so it's geometric distribution and this comes out to be 0 0.0472 okay one thing you need to take care here that it is not binomial distribution there is no possibility that this success happens on first or second or third or fourth someday that's why there's no ncr in front of this it is straight away failure seven failures and seventh success eight success rather eight day next four randomly chosen years Find the probability that in exactly one of these years, the wet day is in October 8th. So we already know the success that the rain is on 8th October for the first time is 0 0.0472. So now this becomes our success, 0 0.0472 because the criteria is that the first wet day is 8th October and therefore that success is, this is one. So Q will be 1 minus 0 0.0472. There are fixed number of years again. Four randomly chosen years. There are fixed number of years. And we want exactly one of them to be meeting this criteria. So it will be binomial again. All four conditions met. So 4C1 success is 1 failure. 1 minus 0 0.0472 to the power three there will be three failures out of four years on one success and that one success could be any of the four years that's why we are using 4c1 here let's see what is the answer which is 0 0.163 question number six the time taken in minutes to complete a particular task by employees at a large company are normally distributed with mean 32.2. Okay, and standard deviation is 9.6. Find the probability that randomly chosen employees take more than 28.6 minutes. Okay, so probability that X is greater than 28.6 equal to what? Okay, so let's try to visualize this. We should always draw it and plan how will we go about it. So the mean is 32.2. 
and uh, standard deviation is this and 28.6 will be less than this so suppose 28.6 is here this is 28.6 we want more than 28.6 that means we want the sum of all the probabilities in this area that means area under curve from 28.6 till uh, corner of the normal distribution but the problem is that it is uh, less than mean that means it will have a negative z score which is not part of our table and it is more than we need so the smarter way we can do is reflect this here the reflection of this line on the right side will be exactly will be having exactly same z score but positive whatever is negative z score here we will get positive here so we'll turn the negative z score into positive and if we find the area under this this area will be exactly equal to the area we want more than this z score so very easy one so we can do it 28.6 minus mean 32.2 divided by standard deviation 9.6 this is the z score for x is less than 28.6 and when we use our calculator we get the z score is 0 0.375 so as we plan here in this drawing we will convert this to positive and we will find the probability for z less than positive 0 0.375 which will be exactly the area for what is more than 28.6 okay so z score 0 0.375 let's look at our z score table 0 0.3 is here 7 7 will be 0 0.6443 and we need 5 also 19 so 0 0.6443 plus 0 0.9 so it will become 0 0.6462 0 0.6462 is the probability and straight away we can use this one 0 0.646 and there is no need to write 2 because 3 sigmoid figures this is the probability okay part b 20% of the employees take longer than t minutes let me again visualize this. 20% of the employees take longer than T minutes. So 20% is more than a number T. This is 32.2. Obviously 20% will be somewhere here. Very, very small amount. That means we will have a number greater than 32.2 and which is a good news because it's easier to find a positive Z score from here. So if this is 20% which is 0 0.2 probability that means that less than it will be 0 0.8 and that's what we will look at our table again 0 0.8 probability gives us what 0 0.8 0 0.756677 okay 7995 can you see here we're looking at probability okay 0 0.8 was probability it looks like that 0 0.8 is z score no 0 0.8 is probability so I'm looking at this 0 0.7995 and 0 0.7995 is given by what 0 0.84 so 0 0.84 and I need 5 more so 5 will be here 2 at 2 it will be there so 0 0.842 is a z score corresponding to the probability 0 0.8 so probability of t rather x x is less than t was 0 0.8 so z score for that x is less than t is 0 0.84 and 2 now we can find this 0 0.842 will be t minus 32.2 divided by uh, it was 9.6 right standard deviation okay 9.6 so let's multiply 0 0.842 with 9.6. By the time I do this, I request you to subscribe to this channel and like this video so that more and more people get benefited and uh, it's a motivation for the person who's making the video. That's me. So 
I got 8.0832 here equal to t minus 32.2 and now we can transfer it here we get t. t will be 32 positive here positive will be 40.08 40.08 so we'll round it out to three seasonal figures again 40.1 minutes is the value of t and which is very much possible let's go to the next one find the probability that the time taken to complete the task by a randomly chosen employee differs from the mean by less than 15 minutes so back to our drawing so we want this is the mean 32.2 we want up to 47.2 which is 15 minutes more than 32 and 15 minutes less than this will be 17.2 so we want an area between these two right 15 minutes above and 15 minutes below so let's find z score for 17.2 first and we'll find its probability 17.2 minus 32.2 over 9.6 and we know it is 15 so minus 15 over 9.6 and minus 15 over 9.6 is 1.563 we can write minus 1.563 Okay, that means the z-score here is minus 1.563 and obviously it will be plus 1.563 here. So let's find the probability for this one first. Probability of z less than 1.563 which is positive. So uh, the same we'll use later for this one but first let's start with this and let's go to our table again 1.563. 1.5 and 6 is here 0 0.9406 and 3 is uh, 4 so it becomes 0 0.941 okay so let's go back to our question and write the probability here 0 0.941 probability of z less than minus 1.563 will be 1 minus 0 0.941 which will be uh, 0 0.059 okay so 0 0.059 and we want the area between the two this is let me uh, show what is 0 0.059 this is the area 0 0.059 the one which is below minus 1.503 and 0 0.941 was the whole area below this that means including this area and if i subtract the smaller area from the big i'll get the one which is in middle of that so probability of uh, you can write z rather let me write the negative one first negative 1.563 z and here is positive 1.563 which can also be written as probability of 17.2 is less than x is less than 47.2 will be 0 0.941 minus 0 0.059 and which came out to be 0 0.882 In question 7, we have been given a table showing distance in x meters and its cumulative frequency. The distance scale should be up to 1600 and cumulative frequency up to 140. And I have already made that visible here in my given grid. One thing we need to be very careful about is this. It is 200. First section is up to 200, next one is up to 300. That means the gap here is from 0 to 200, which is 200. But here it is 200 to 300, which is just 100. 
and next 100 next one is 300 to 500 which is 200 again next one is 400 so they are unequal sections your scale must not be these numbers your scale must be a very regular uniform scale 200 400 600 800 it does not depend on what is in the table so just look at your maximum value and your graph should reach to your maximum value which is reaching in this case 1600 all right next thing we have to uh, be careful about while drawing the cumulative frequency graph is that 200 is the upper limit and upper limit has a graph with the cumulative frequency not the midpoint if it is 0 to 200 100 is the midpoint but 100 will not have graph is 16 200 the upper limit will have it similarly here 300 will have a graph with 46 and 500 with 88 i have already marked let me show you 216 and 346 first so you will know that i have already marked them so 200 is here so if i go up 200 line here uh, if you see here it this one is 16 according to my scale this is 20 and we have 10 here so 16 will be three units above this and that's how i got the point i have got let me show that point by cross this is the point second one was 346 so 300 is the middle line of 200 and 400 and 46 will be 40 plus 3 more units up and that's why i got this particular point now let me join these so that i get a cumulative frequency graph and i will use lines to have a better graph so this is my first line and our cumulative frequency graph is ready and that's what we just had to do okay next part use your graph to estimate the interquartile range interquartile range let me write here iqr is upper quartile q3 minus lower quartile q1 q3 is three-fourth of the total frequency total frequency here is 140 yes it is 140 so three-fourth of 140 is equal to 105 so we'll go to the 105th rank and find q3 similarly in q1 is one-fourth of total frequency which is 140 and one-fourth of 140 is 35 so we'll get q1 from 35 please remember 35 and 105 are not q1 and q3 by themselves they are just the position where these quartiles exist they will help us to find them so let's start with 35 first so 30 is here and 35 will be little above that so let me draw a line exactly middle of 30 and 40 that's 35 okay and if i join from bottom it will be here okay so that gives me 220 40 60 260 is q1 lower quartile at 105 100 and 105 will be here Okay, somewhere here. And if I join this here, it is coming uh, is that the middle? This is the line, no, there's another line. Next line. Okay, got it. It is the next line. It is shaking, but yeah, I can see that very clearly that it is at this line, which is exactly in middle, so we can call it 700 this was 260 okay don't write on the graph itself because i wanted to show you that's why i wrote it here so q1 is 260 q3 upper quartile is 700 so iqr interquartile range is uh, q3 minus q1 which is 700 minus 260 that will be 440 